our district congress Christian education. We will give honor to our moderator and his staff, Sister Thomas and her staff, uh, Dean Lawson and her staff, and all of the delegates that are here, pastors and all the members that have gathered here for this annual uh, con District Congress of Christian Education. Come on, give God a hand of praise. For his worthy. Okay, that was good enough for me. That was good enough if I were to introduce myself. Come on, give God a hand clap. For his worthy to be praised and greatly to be ready. that every one of us who has been a part of those people, not only who belong to the district, but in our families and friends' lives, every one of us who have been a part of grieving and has lost somebody, God has them safely in his care. And it's a blessing to know that the Almighty God that we still serve it, after all of that has happened in our lives, after the loss of a loved one, a friend, we still are serving an awesome God. Come on now, say that song. In memorializing our lost, uh, our friends and those that have lost and our family members and memorializing them I just got a few words and then I'm going to sit down and I don't want this to be no surprise to you Jesus is the way the truth and the life Right. And from this day forward, as we memorialize our family and friends and loved ones, always remember that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let everyone say amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. Protocol having already been established, let me just say I'm grateful to be here. And uh, we, de we definitely want to recognize our wife and our son, uh, uh, Pastor Walker, uh, here today. And if you all don't mind, let me just get my, uh, my uh, final remarks out the way. So when we get, when uh, Pastor Walker get through, uh, we can go ahead and have our prayer circuit and offering and we'll just be gone. Let me just say, I am uh, just elated about the way everything has transpired this week. I mean, on every level, I am giving thanks to God that God got involved in this program even when they were planning it. God was involved in this program. His presence was already here. And he showed his faithfulness in allowing you to come here, allowing you to be faithful, and allowing you to come and be patient, uh, and stepping out on faith. And this is what you did. You stepped out on faith when you came to this, uh, to this Congress. I want to commend you for coming. I want to commend the parents, the churches, and I definitely want to commend our kids. And come on, give them a hand. I mean, God bless them. I, mean, I want to give them thanks. I, I told them this already uh, in private. Now I want to say it in public. I'm just proud of this dean staff, this president staff, and dean staff, the entire staff and the entire teaching staff for making this program possible and doing a great job. I think we ought to stand up right now and give them a standing ovation. They have done a marvelous job. Thank you so much for all that you have done. And this is only a prelude to what is to come in the Russian Spring District Association Congress of Christian Education. 
Amen. We know that there are going to be some, some more things coming uh, uh, your way soon. Cop will be starting soon, and we're grateful for that. But I just want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I had a wonderful time. The classes were just great. A, a presentation from uh, Pastor Kirkland's uh, class, and I think it's going to be great. Amen. So we'll let uh, I will introduce the speaker and allow him to come on, come, and then Pastor Walker can can come behind that. But as I said, I don't have time to give Pastor Walker the introduction that he so truly deserved. I just want to say this. He is our son in the ministry, the pastor of the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. We are just proud of him. I want you to know that now. And when I said I'm not playing, I'm not joking, I'm not teasing with you, I am proud of this pastor. He's doing a great job at the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Great dynamic preacher, a pulpiteer. He's known uh, not just here in Silicon, but all over Birmingham. And, and he's not as young as he look. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he's not as young. But he's, he's young. He's not as young as he looks. He looks really young. And we're grateful to God that God has preserved him. We just thank him for him and his wife and his church family. I'm talking about none other than the pastor Clint L. Walker, the pastor of the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, Alpine, Alabama. And also the pastor, give me that other one, Victory. Amen. Victory. Amen. Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. God bless you and give him, give God praises as uh, Reverend Kirkley come. And let's go ahead and just welcome him to the pool pit. Come on, Pastor Walker. And I want to welcome the inner pastor that would like to come up here and uh, support him. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. For well, God is worthy to be praised. We follow protocol that's already been established. We bring greetings from the Department of Fine Art and Literacy in just a few days of things that normally take weeks to learn. So we want to present to you this afternoon. They will give you their name, follow their name, uh, Deacon Harry Gaston will come with the scripture from John chapter 1 and verse 1 and we'll come back with a chorus rendition of yes Jesus loves me amen, amen. amen. Gaston will come now and he will give us John chapter 1 and verse 1. In, in the beginning
Let's give a hand for Pastor Clint L. Walker as he comes to us now. God, our Father, we pause for one moment to simply say thank you. Thank you for this, another day's journey. We pray for each person who is under the sound of my voice that they would render their lives unto you as living sacrifices holy and acceptable unto Almighty God. Help us to say, as our Savior declared, I must be about my Father's business. We pray now the reasons we have gathered have been for your glory, for our own edification, that we might leave better than the way we came. It is in your Son Jesus' name we pray. As we all said, amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. 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 God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. As repeatedly stated, uh, protocol has already been established. But I would be amiss if I did not take the time to honor my own pastor, who happens to be the moderator, that is the Reverend Dr. Jerry Jones. Can we honor the moderator on this evening with a hand? <laughs> Come on, that's our moderator. You could do better than that. Amen. Amen. Not only Dr. Jones, but of course our own first lady from the Mount Cleveland Missionary Baptist Church in the person of Lady Jones. Would you honor Lady Jones with a hand? Amen. Amen. Um, there is a word I want to try and lift up this evening uh, that's found in the King James translation of the Bible. Go with me to the New Testament the book of Romans, it is our Congress theme, Romans chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. The thematic text for this Congress of Christian Education is found in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Hear the word of the Lord. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Um, Dean Lawson, I want to use as a topical text the A section of verse 32. The A section of Romans chapter 8, verse 32, the A section says, He that spared not his own son, yes, sir. but delivered him up for us all. Yes, sir. I don't know. Talk about this one. Pastor Welch, it says, He that spared not his own son, yeah. but delivered him up for us all. Say that, now. Say that. Lady McKinney, can I try just one more time? The amens have already dried up. He that spared not his own son, Come on, but delivered him up for us all. I want to tag this text with a topic they need to know. They need to know. My dear brothers and sisters, as a young boy, Growing up in Mobile, Alabama, I love going to and attending the Lord's house. And, and I especially enjoyed Sunday morning devotion. Yes, Any given Sunday, one of those old deacons would strike out with one of my favorite songs, I've Got the Love of Jesus in My Heart. Yes, I, I wish some of y'all knew, I got the love of Jesus in my heart. They, they would be singing, makes me love everybody. Come on, talk to if you can. Makes me love everybody. They would go on and say, you can't make me doubt him. Come on, y'all. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about I got the love of Jesus 
in, in my heart. Inquiring minds want to know, and I do too, do we have the love of Jesus in, in our hearts? Be 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 beloved, if you know him, if, if you know him, you ought to show him because you owe him. Let me say that again. I say, if you know him, you ought to show him. Why? Because you owe him. The songwriter says, Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. Be 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 beloved, we will never, ever turn the world toward God's love by simply going to church. I, I believe that was the thing, Ding Lawson, turning the, the, the world towards the love of God through evangelism and Christian education. But we will never, ever turn the world towards God's love by simply going to church. But we can turn the world towards the love of God by you and I being the church. It, it, it's our job to testify and to tell. I need about three more witnesses. I say it's our job to testify and to tell it. And, and no wonder Romans 8 verse 31, the B section says, if God be for us. You don't have to worry about nobody when you testify and tell it. The text says, if God be for us, who? Ooh, can be against us. Right. I wonder if there's anybody looking at me and listening to me who know that you and I as the people of God, we have a life changing, we have a life saving message for the masses. Yeah. Say it again Pastor Walker. I say we have a life saving and we have a life changing message to share with the masses. What is that message, Pastor? It's in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, the A section. Our message is, he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Yeah. Why? That we might be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Be beloved, that's a message that they need to know. Yeah. That he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. That is a message that they need to know. And allow me to remind you what, what Dean Lawson told us on Wednesday, that we can't share what we don't have. Yeah. You can't tell what you don't know. Y'all ain't saying nothing. L listen, listen, listen. I believe we have something that they need to know. Yeah, yeah. And beloved, and beloved, if someone is going to decide between heaven and hell, yeah. I, I believe there are certain things that they need to know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you're writing something down, write this down. They need to know, number one, the sinner's destination to hell. Come on, the sinner's destination to hell. Right. They need to know that before you can be born again, you must realize that you're lost. Talk, talk to me if you can. Me, 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 meaning you aren't going to heaven yeah. in your current state and status. Yeah. Why? Because many people have the wrong idea about what sin is. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we believe, Pastor Jones, that, that sin is what murderers do. That sin is what bank robbers do. That sin is what crackheads and PP loan frosters do. Y'all ain't saying nothing. A lot of people do not consider themselves uh, to be sinners destined for a burning hell. The way some of y'all looking at me right now makes me know that you think you live above sin. Slide your feet back, here I come. But my mentor, Dr. Rogers L. White, say the only way you live above sin is if you live on the second floor and you got a prostitute living on the first floor. The sinner's destination to hell. I ain't scared of nail one of y'all in here. The, the, the Bible paints a totally different picture that we must know what sin is. Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sin. I wish I had a Bible reader here. Not y'all have sin, but all have sin and come short of the glory of God. I, Isaiah 64 and 6 I brought my Bible with me Isaiah 64 and 6 says but we are as all and 
unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. We all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind has taken us away. Look, look at somebody and tell them we all dirty. Oh, they acting like they ain't got no sin in their life. Look at somebody else and tell them we all are dirty. We all are filthy. We all are low down. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We do not deserve to be in the presence of God. Why? Because we have sin in our lives. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody happy but me. I say we do not deserve to be in the presence of God because of sin in our lives. Well, what are you trying to tell me, Pastor? God is righteous and we are ratchet. God is holy and we are holy on every other day and hell on most days. That, that means we don't deserve to go to a city called heaven but we deserve to burn in hell. Up and down me yes, left and right me no. The sinner's destination is to hell. Y'all get quiet. I thought y'all liked the Bible down here. Romans 6 and 23, the A section says for the wages of sin the amen is drying up on this side I'm going to talk to y'all on this side the wages of sin is death yes sir yes sir amen. come on sir yeah. if, if, if a sinner is paid what he deserves then, then all of us earn the paycheck of spiritual death and spiritual separation from God yeah. Anybody glad that God is a righteous God? Yeah. And because God is a righteous God, Lady McKinney, guess what? He requires payment for our sins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but, 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 but guess what? There is good news for the sinner that's destined to hell. What is, what, what, what is it? It is point number two. The Savior died to hell. Hey. Ain't nobody happy but me. I say the Savior's destination is to hell. But the good news on a Friday is that the Savior died to hell. Yes. 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 I, 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 read, I read. I read. Lady Jones. I, I read about two preachers that were standing on the roadside with a sign. All right. Pastor Host Claw, the sign read, What is that? The end is near. Oh, no. yeah. Please turn around before it's too late. All right. All right. One driver was passing by, looked at the preachers, and he screamed at them, Leave us alone, you religious freaks. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then, Sister Thomas, one of the preachers turned to the other preacher and he said, do you think we just should have made a sign that just said the bridge is out? <laughs> no, no, no. The same God that requires payment for sin is the same God through his love for us made a way for our sins to be paid for. Somebody shout, oh yes he did. Oh, 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 oh yes he did. The sinner's destination is to hell. But you ought to be shouting that you got a savior that died to hell. Re re read the Bible. Read the Bible, Duntrell. In Romans 5 and 8, my Bible declares, but God commended his love towards us. In that while we were, I wish I had a Bible reader here, and, and while we were yet sinners, uh, Christ died. Christ died for us. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them the Savior died to hell. Come on, help the little Baptist preach from Alpine. Look at somebody else and tell them the Savior died to hell. I mean, that's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, it shows us this amazing love that God has for us. It says, for he has made him to be sin for us. He who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus, God, the Son, he did not deserve to die. Yeah. I, I, I wish I had a little more help in here. I say he did not deserve to die, but he died in our place uh, and he took our part. He, he, he was sinless and perfect, yet he suffered and died 
for our sins. What, what did he do, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you what he did. He paid a debt he didn't owe with a price he couldn't pay. Now we owe a debt that I can never repay. Yeah. I, I, I got to go back to work, Pastor. I am bivocational. So, so, so to point number one, the sinner's destination to hell. Yeah. Point number two, the Savior died to hell. But then number three, they need to know, number three, there's salvific deliverance through him. Yes, Say it again, Pastor, there's salvific yeah. deliverance through him. Tell about it. Tell about it. Anybody in here knows that there is a highway to heaven? Well, well, and just as there is a highway to heaven, there is a fast track to hell. Yeah. If there's someone trying to decide between heaven and hell as their eternal home, they need to know that salvific deliverance, that salvation is available to anyone, to everyone, and to whomsoever will, they can come to him. I, I, I said anyone and everyone and whomsoever will, they can come to him. Come to him for what? For salvific deliverance. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God that salvation is not based on what we do. Yeah. 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 Why, Sister McKinney? Because we suck. we're two faced. It. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. I, the songwriter said, "I'm glad man didn't make me." Yeah. Salvation is not based on what we do, but it's based on what Him did. Yeah. Yeah. I got an English degree. I know. I, I, I know vernacular structure. Yeah. But but I say salvation is based on what Him. Did. Yeah. Faith through him and faith in him. Yeah. Salvation is available by faith because of him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just, just read your Bible, John 1 and 12. But as many as received yeah. him, yeah. to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Yeah. Even to them that believe on his name. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know for myself that salvation and deliverance is available to any man, any woman, any boy, and any girl. Yeah. Yeah. It is available to anyone who decides to come to him. Yeah. Fact, fact about it. Romans 10, 13, 14, and 15 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him yes, of whom they have not heard? So it's our job to make him known to the unknown. Yeah, you and I, we're responsible to share the good news with the lost that left out the lonely and the left behind. But beloved, the good news is only good news if it gets there in time. And the good news is precisely our theme and our text. Romans 8 32 says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him for us all. They need to know who him really 
is. Can God get a witness? I say they need to know who him really is. Fact about it, the way some of you are looking at me, I need to ask you, do you know who him really is? Isaiah 53, 3 and 6 says he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows acquainted with grief. We hid as our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. I heard Isaiah saying we all like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Can I tell somebody I don't Calvary they crucified him they nailed him in his hands they nailed him in his feet they braided a crown of thorns and they placed it on him head they hung him high they stretched him wide he hung his head and his shoulders and he with his last breath I heard him tell his daddy father into thy hands I commend my spirit can God get a witness and he died one Friday on Calvary ah you know that he died and they laid him in a grave and he stayed there all night Friday night stayed there all day Saturday all night Saturday night but bright early I thought I walked in the Baptist district bright early Sunday morning he got up and I heard him saying all power is there anybody here who know God got the power not black power not white power not green power not military power not demonic power not angelic power but all power can God get a witness I got to go thank you Dr. Jones thank you Dean Lawson thank you President Thomas but before I leave you can I ask you one question do y'all know what it is can I ask you one question ain't the Lord alright ain't the Lord alright ain't the Lord ain't the Lord
say my on this week. We had 14 classes. Um, in the morning, uh, Sister Springer had, with her uh, morning totals, the three days, 35. Sister McMurray, three days, 27. Sister Drake, four. Reverend Henderson, 30. Sister McKinney, 28. Reverend Rouser, 15. Reverend Kirkland, six. In our evening, Sister Springer had morning and evening, so she had 37, Sister McMurray 27, Reverend Jacobs 4, Reverend Welch 15, Reverend Jackson 10, and Reverend Hostclaw 15. And the way I get these totals is for the three days. It's for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You add the three totals together, and that's how you get the total, which gave us, um, counting our three days, we have a total of 253, Amen. 253. Amen. And we say thank you, Lord, because the report that I had to send to Tennessee 
I estimated that we would have a total of 300. We normally say 600, but I said 300, and we have 253. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Yeah, yeah. We had a total of 12, a uh, total of 14 churches who represented in the district, and we had one guest church. So that gave us a total of 15 churches. And that is our overview of, of our Congress of Christian Education classes for 2021. And I tell you, I can't thank God enough because I know I can tell you that Sister Thomas and I worked so hard and we prayed and we didn't know what we would have. So that's why we can say thank you, Lord, because it was nobody but him. Yeah. Yes, the pandemic is still going on, but yes, Jesus still lives. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Following uh, churches during the 65th annual session of the Congress of Christian Education, on July the 15th, submitted uh, Cape Springs submitted $500, Harper Springs $500, St. John $500, and today Bethel Alpine $750, which is a total of $2,250 this week. Amen. And our expenses during this Congress was uh, uh, Sister uh, Mary Thomas, some uh, kitchen supplies, $36.84. Reverend E.L. Jacobs, medals and ribbons, $101.25. Sister Janet Lawson, some paper towels, tissues, and uh, she faxed some uh, cop paperwork to Tennessee. It was $37.97. And Reverend uh, Roger Holescloth uh, turned in receipt for uh, cutting the, uh, the lawn. And that's a total of $626.06. Our disbursement report, official staff, $1,645. The instructors, $490. The sermon and our grand total disbursement for Congress is $2,786.06. We also received $200 today for education, for the Congress Education Commissioners, and also uh, $20 were returned back from Congress. So the total amount we took in today was $2,470. And our total that we have in the bank as of today is In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Good afternoon, Russian Springs. Haven't we had a great time this week? I am so happy to see all of you. We just thank God for your presence every day. We had uh, good attendance, good classes, good addresses, and a marvelous, magnificent sermon today. Yes. And we just praise and thank God for all that he has done. I want to uh, remind you again that if any of, anyone wants to become a commissioner, educational commissioner, we had two persons to add to our list today, just let me know and we will get you as one of our commissioners. 
And I wanted to just thank our kitchen committee for being yes. wonderful, yes. for the wonderful food that they prepared for us this week. And everybody, uh, we want to thank our musicians, and we especially want to thank our new little drummer here. Y'all give him a big hand. And I want the children in the choir just to stand and take a big bow, because y'all were just great. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We just thank God for our children, because that's our future. Um, and I also wanted to let you know that every child, we have book bags for all of these children. Amen. So we're going to ask, we want to do that now. We want to give them a thank, something to thank them for being here this week. So, um, Brother Hostess, will you have, um, and we want every child that's here, uh, I want you to know that Walmart donated gift cards for us to purchase school supplies. And also, Sister Burton donated all of the book pack, the backpacks. So we have backpacks filled with school supplies that we want to, for the children, we're gonna take this little five or six minutes because it's important. We wanna show them that we love them and we appreciate them. It's about our State Congress. The State Congress of Christian Education, the Alabama Baptist State Congress of Christian Education, will be the week of the last week in July, and um, it will be virtual online. So if you go to the Alabama State Baptist website, you can see you'll be able to see the uh, State Congress of Christian Education. We can, we can have a circle of pride and still be socially distant, but we'll stand in agreement. Let us look to the heavens. Most holy and righteous God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this week. Thank you, Father God, for our staff. Thank you, Father, for the vision. Thank you for the word that's gone forth from the sermons to the, the addresses to the teaching and the classes, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, that I believe, Lord, that your name was lifted in this place this week, Father God, that you, you, will be, you have been glorified. Thank you, Father, that someone has learned more about Jesus this week, Father God. Lord, we just want to come and say thank you this morning before we even lift up another word, Father God. Thank you for who you are, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, that you have kept us, Father, safe going up and down the highways. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy that has covered us, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, for Jesus, Father God, that he became sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Thank you, Father God, that we've got a story to tell. Thank you that we have a testimony. Thank you, Father, for the examples that have been set down here in the Rustic Springs District Missionary Baptist Association. Father God, men and women who have labored for you, men and women who have lived for you, men and women who have set an example for you before us, Father God, who have come up, Lord, in this district. Thank you for strong leaders within this district, Father God. Thank you for those that you have put in place. Thank you for every teacher, every administrator. And Lord, I thank you for our youth, Father God. Lord God, even though we might have had a couple of teenagers, thank you for these young people that have been here, Father God. Lord, we just want to lift them up before you, Father God. I pray that you just keep them in your care, Father God. Keep them close to you, Lord God. That they will always remember what they have learned down here. And that they will keep it close to heart, Father God. That they may tell somebody else, Lord God, about who they learned about and what they learned about while they were down here at Russian Spring, Father God. I pray that you will raise them up as leaders in their generation. That their peers may respect them, Father God. That someone, Lord, 
may look up to them when they need them, Father God. And these children will be, will be able to share the message about Jesus, Lord, to those who are around them, Father God. I lift up the generation that's missing, missing, Father God. I lift them up right now, Father God, because the world is grabbing at them, Lord God. Athletics is grabbing at them. The streets is grabbing at them. Everything, Lord God, the devil is grabbing at them. But I pray that you would secure our young people, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And then, Lord, I pray for each and every one that's in this circle, Father God. Somebody is in need, Father God, and they may not be saying it, but Lord, you know what we need before we even speak it. Father God, I pray that you would visit every single one in this circle, Lord God, from heart to heart, Lord God. My word, your word says that you will supply all of our needs, Father God, according to your riches and glory, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you would just supply each and every need, Lord God. Even those that they stand in the gap for, Father God, we pray that you heal where healing is needed, that you will provide where provision is needed, that you will bless where blessing is needed, that you will be a company keeper where company keeper is needed, that you will be a friend where friend is needed, Father God. Whatever they need, Father God, we ask that you and Lord God just be a supplier. Yeah. And then, Father God, we just pray and as we continue to go through, Lord God, this pandemic, I'm reminded of what David said, that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Lord, continue to be with us. Let us know, Father God, that you're right there with us in the midst of this pandemic. And Lord, even though we might have lost some, we know that you have gained some. Father, we count it not a loss if they died in Christ, Father God. For Lord, we'll never perish, I heard in class this morning, as long, Lord God, as we are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Father, be with us, Lord God. And then, Lord, as we go to our various destinations, we keep ask that you keep us safe for your traveling grace as we go up and down this highway. And, Father, we continue to pray for Russian Springs District, yeah. that you will strengthen us, Lord God, as a unit. That, Lord, that you will put a, Lord, let, put a burden upon the hearts of the leaders, Lord God, yeah. wherever they may be. The hearts of the pastors in this district, the hearts of the spiritual leaders in this district. That, Lord God, they will, Lord, that, that they will pour out into this district and continue, Lord God, to add to what we are and who we are, Father God. That we may continue to support, Lord God, the mission and the vision, Lord God, that's birthed down here. That, Father, that we can continue to carry on the message from generation to generation. That you are God and that you are God all by yourself. And that we will continue to carry the message that we are to evangelize the lost and let others know about your love. Help us to carry on the vision. Help us to keep the torch lit, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide on each one of us from this time and forevermore. Let us all say amen. amen. God bless you.